Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. We finally made it. Uh, two small waterfalls, and now we can do the victory road. Final lap, everybody. Here we go. Victory road ahead. Thanks for that sign. I never would have guessed. Let's get to it. This episode should be the entirety of the victory road. It's kind of sad that we have to displace that beautiful piano sonata. I don't know if that's actually what that is. Someone's like, actually, that's not a sonata. That's a um, that's a classical symphonium. So, thankfully though, the trainers in the victory road will have a lot more variety than just fighting a buttload of water Pokemon. So you're welcome. But they're all really high leveled. So make sure you're at least in like your mid 40s, maybe low 40s if you want to survive. I'm not worried. We're doing great. Do this critical hit. So yeah, more about beat up. It doesn't have a base power, but it incorporates six hits from your Pokemon. I think it has to do with like their their base stats or something like that. So it's the best physical dark move that I could teach Sneasel. And Sneasel is surprisingly um, surprisingly a strong physical attacker. I didn't know that. I've always would have kind of lumped in Sneasel with being a mixed attacker or a special attacker. But no, it's not. So there you go. And you get six shots. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, we're going to get a bunch of levels. Everybody should probably be in the... I would say the below 50. So maybe we won't be too under leveled. Ooh, an Alakazam. Let's get Miguel in there. Suzanne's still under leveled a little bit, but let's mix it up. I want everybody to get a fair shake. And there should be an opportunity to use probably your entire team during Victory Road, if I could guess. The variety of Pokemon, like I said before, is pretty high. So, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Alakazam is great. I talked about Alakazam already, but I guess when I think of like cool Pokemon, a lot of what I think of is like the Pokemon cards. Because I'm trying to think about the order in which I learned about Pokemon. Because I don't think I had the game first. Let's see what this is. Torment. That's going to go right into the garbage. Okay. I want to say... I hope I don't run out of repels. That's not what I wanted to say. What I want to say is that I learned about... Okay. Ooh, Ultra Ball. That's good. Might be catching stuff later. I am going to try to do do some legendary hunting as I go forward. You know, I'm not going to like go out of my way to get a... I'm going to shiny hunt legendaries. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just going to try to catch them as is. Which is funny because like I don't have any intent to really fill out the old Pokedex or anything. I actually did that in... I did that in Arceus, and man, the catching mechanics of that game are great. Like, if they had... If they do that for the Pokemon games going forward, it obviously needs some work, though. It's not perfect. But, in general, like, it, it it's fun because it does encourage you to catch everything, and it's just kind of out there for you. But then also part of it is, like, it's a little exhausting to try to catch everything. I just don't usually have the energy energy to do that so I don't you know and that quick claw has been paying dividends on Samuel Samuel's unfortunately the slowest member of my team not by a ton I mean it's like it's got low 80s for speed which isn't bad but everybody else is cranking out a little bit after a hundred so we like that okay so almost level 50 for everybody yeah I'm thinking I was, I was really concerned about it, legitimately concerned that I wasn't going to be high enough of a level, but this is two trainers and I'm almost through 50 levels for all of my Pokemon. I think the fear that I had, the crippling fear of this children's game, was that I, um, I wasn't going to have those, I didn't know about those trainers that you're supposed to fight. And who has a quick attack on like a level 40 something Star Raptor? You deserve to get destroyed. But. 48 and you still have quick attack? Boo. Boo. Like, at least teach it aerial ace or something. Um, all those water trainers, I didn't realize that the last episode was going to have... I was going to have to fight 700 of them. 
That was annoying. But it's great content, is it not? Ooh, now we can be fully healed. Yeah, there's a lot of things I always talk- I talk about Arceus so much in this game. This honestly should just be talk about Arceus for 45 minutes. Let's play. Oop, wrong way. My directions are bad too, by the way, so you'll have to bear with me while I stumble through this. I'm going to do very poorly. This not complicated children's game, but um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. They did, they did a lot of things right in that game, mechanics-wise. Visually, no. Visually, that game looks pretty awful, but in a lot of ways, it's a step in the right direction. Especially considering that they kind of started to do things right with like Let's Go. The idea of seeing Pokemon in the overworld, I think that's great. It definitely creates more of an open world experience, more sandboxy. I like that a lot. And then, uh, but the ca the catching mechanics in that game were bad. You know, the whole they tried to make it kind of more similar to Pokemon Go. You know, it's like an elaboration on that game where you. I see people spinning their fingers on their cell phones. I'm like, what in the good gosh dang are you doing? So there's that. But in general, that was kind of the beginning of doing things right. And then they elaborated on it a bit more when they made Sword and Shield. They had, they kind of refined the overworld mechanics and they kind of added in those little weird energy fields that you could go and catch Pokemon in which I didn't really care for because it was just like, you can do this in this huge hub world and nowhere else. And I was like, okay, that's fine. It just felt kind of like they, uh, here we go, we get Charlie in there for some fighting attacks. Kind of like they ham-fisted it in. Ham-fisted? That's a weird word. Or two words, I'm not sure. Can't do the math on that one, but. So there's Sword and Shield. And then Sword and, Sh Sword and Shield had a lot of problems with it too, but it was an okay game, right? And then they finally make Arceus, which, in my opinion, who we just, that must have been an awesome close combat because Blissey has like 8 million HP. I think it has like the highest base HP stat in all of Pokemon. Holy smokes, and we got 7,000 experience for that? Holy moly. Wow. And everybody's already level 50. Yeah, we'll be okay. Probably be right around the low levels of the, of the first Elite Four member. But yeah, they, uh, Arceus kind of did all the things right with the mechanics. The mechanics. They came back and they, they improved on the battling system. They improved on, where am I going? I'm assuming this is the only way to go. Oh, cool. Rock smash and strength puzzles. Love this. Oh boy. I am doomed. Actually, you know what? Let's go this way first. Yeah. Can you imagine how much worse this would have been if you would have had to teach these TMs to your Pokemon? You would have had to, like, slog through this area with, like, a B barrel. Oh my gosh, that would have been miserable. Alright. Okay. I haven't used the bike in, like, a million years, so I don't even remember how to do it. Am I good enough? Okay. I'm assuming there's a. Yeah, hold on. Then we get a downshift after we do. Okay. This is totally worth it, everybody. This item is going to be super... This might actually be an item I do need. So I shouldn't talk smack. Okay. Nope. I mean, ethers are nice. Replaces... You can get all your PP back. And you can have a big PP. And you want that. You don't have a big PP. So... Arceus... Was another step in the right direction in terms of mechanics. The battling system is a little wonky. But, in general, everything is improved. The catching system is better. I like the crafting. I thought I wasn't going to. And then it turns out that I do like it. I liked it a lot. So it was good. It was fine. And, you know, the open world dynamic is good. I think that it's fun. It, it makes things a little complicated. Just because of the nature of Pokemon games. They're kind of more linear and you have to balance that. Because like I was saying, it'd be really cool if you could go and do the gyms in any order that you wanted to. There's some like fan-made games and ROM hacks out there, I'm sure, that do that, which is fun. But, you know, 
Rapid action with poison jab? That's a neat move. Was not expecting that. It's a good counter. Oh. What are you doing that? I can't believe I got poisoned by po- Expel the- What? Excuse me? Oh my gosh, that's such a cheese. That is such a cheese. That makes me think of, um, in Pokemon Let's Go, when you would choose your Eevee or your Pikachu, whichever version you had, and it would learn all those, like, really busted moves. Oh my goodness. These games are already easy, Game Freak. Come on. Oh, that's so cheap. Or, like, when you... I feel like the critical hits that you get in this game aren't legitimate. This game is so illegitimate. Ooh, Carnivine? I don't think we've seen a Carnivine yet, which is interesting, and that's a good reason why you should come here. I mean, you have to. You can't... You can't skip Victory Road, but... In order to complete the 150 Pokemon Sinnoh decks, which you just have to see them, you don't have to catch them. Man, Carnivine is fast, faster than a Sneasel? Oof. Yeah, we definitely need to, to evolve Suzanne. Suzanne's defenses are not very robust. But yeah, you come here, and you can see all the remaining Pokemon that you might have missed. I really hate Carnivine, though because of the amount of times that I've had to fight and catch one in Arceus. And they're really prevalent in the early part of the game and they're just, they're obnoxious. They'll come after you and shoot their goo all over you and I hate it. I just hate it, I hate it, it's just gummy. All right, so we can probably take it out with a Giga Drain, but let's throw a Leech Seed on it for fun. The Leech Seed Toxic combo is something that I remember doing as a as a youngin. I learned that technique by having a Venusaur. A Venusaur can, can do that, and you can kind of cheese it. I don't think I did that in Pokemon Red because I was a smart kid and I chose Charizard to be my final evolution Pokemon. But when I had Venusaur, Toxic, Leech Seed, I believe I probably did that in like Pokemon Yellow. That game was neat because you had a Pikachu, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle. You get all of them, you get the whole gang, and there's little stories for each of them, sort of. I mean, I don't, actually, I don't remember them being really fleshed out, but I think in Pokemon Let's Go, they did actually give them a little bit of like a side story as to why they were the way that they are. Why are you the way that you are? Okay, so that's nothing. Is this an item? Nope. Great. All right, let's think about this for a second. Oop, I think I did that wrong. Yes. I did. I did it wrong. And I can't go. Ah. <laughs> uh, I couldn't. I couldn't have fathomed that going a different way, to be honest. Me messing up a puzzle for children. That's okay. There's going to be a lot of people watching this probably screaming like, No, that's not how you do that thing. And I'm going to say, you are right. 100% right. I'm not going to argue with you. My sense of direction is a negative thousand. I believe that was given genetically to my uh, siblings, so. But I feel like that's the way, that, isn't that how you have to do it? How do you get down there? Push this down. Oh yeah, okay, that would make sense, yeah. I just was being impatient. Ah, yeah, see, look at that. That's good math and good science. We figured it out, everybody. You're welcome. Okay. So apparently we are the litmus test for this Pokemon trainer. Speaking of litmus test, the things that I say always trigger these random thoughts and memories, so hopefully you enjoy me sharing these random stories because I ain't going to stop. But anyway, speaking of random stories, one of my jobs in my youth, which I really enjoyed, was being a summer camp counselor. And I was lucky enough, even though I'm not in my current career, I was able to teach the science class, which I thought was really fun. Really enjoyed just sharing all those kind of fun things with the kids. And one of the things that I taught as part of the science class, it would, it would just be random little cool fun experiments that I could do with them. And one of the things that I, I, I would sometimes do it on the fly, you know, I went to the grocery store after reading that in certain cases you can use red cabbage if you boil a red cabbage and you get ooh was not ready for that if you boil a red cabbage 
you can use the juice from it as a way to, it's kind of like a, it's like a pseudo litmus test where it can detect whether things are more acidic or basic depending upon what color it turns when you use it, which I thought was really neat. And I showed that to the kids. The only downside was that I was boiling cabbage and cabbage is very stinky. I don't really care for cabbage, but you know, in general, if you're a cabbage lover, good for you. Maybe you enjoy a nice slaw or a sauerkraut, but I personally do not align with said culinary choices, but yeah, it smelled like stinky cabbage, but the kids learned a lot that day, so I don't feel bad. I taught them about science and the world and how hor horrifically smelly cabbage is. That's a pretty strong Clefable. Fun fact, Clefable was actually supposed to, not Clefable, but Clefairy. Clefairy was actually supposed to be the mascot Pokemon, but it was deemed to be too feminine and that young boys would not want to play a game with Clefairy on the cover. I would have played a game with Clefairy on the cover. I don't know if I would have when I was seven. You know, now that I'm older, I'm like, you know what? Do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. There's a lot of interesting choices that get made, and you know, I'm obviously not in the field of video game marketing, so I really don't have much of a much of a leg to stand on, but okay. We are apparently slower than a Torterra. That is absolute garbage. I don't believe that in the slightest. How does that happen? How are we slower than a Torterra? <sighs> garbage. Garbage. But you're not using Earthquake on us, boy. Okay. Yeah, I taught a lot of random science experiments that year, and I may have electrocuted myself with the things I did. I don't quite remember, but... Man, this Torterra is strong. But... Not strong enough, because we're going to fly like an eagle, or like a... Crow? Isn't there a... They put, like, the Corvid Knight, or whatever, Covid Knight, <laughs> probably not that. In the... You don't want that. In the new, um... And Sword and Shield as like the like the steel flying Pokemon that was pretty cool. Not cooler than Skarmory. That's the OG steel flying Pokemon, but Yeah, I'm thinking we're probably gonna top out around like 54, 55. Acrobatics? What is this? It's a flying move. The user is not holding it up. Yeah, see, that would that would be a good move, but I will tell you in advance that all of the Elite Four Pokemon do have a, hel a hold item. That is a fact. They all do. I don't know if, like, the, the rosters were meant to be competitive, but they certainly tried. Okay. So I feel like if I push that, I can't go that way, but I don't have... I can't not push this. So maybe we have to just come back. It's probably one of those split path things. What a weird haircut. I'm assuming that maybe this is like culturally it makes sense to like some sort of like martial artist warrior in Japan. So I like probably offended millions of people, but it's ah, it's weird. It look, this kind of looks like a mullet to me, which I mean like, hey, don't get me wrong. There is nothing wrong with a mullet. Honestly, I praise a mullet, especially if it's a woman with a mullet. That's probably like my favorite thing. So yeah. Yeah, I definitely can't wait to get Suzanne evolved because even being the fastest member of our team, we're still being outsped by, we got sped by a Torterra. That shouldn't happen. That is Bupkis. Ooh, a Hippowdon. This is actually a good test. There may be Hippowdons in our future. I don't think we fought one yet. But it is a very tough Pokemon. Has a lot of HP. It's a ground type. Very strong. Very thick. And it loves to change the weather on the field. So this is a Pokemon where, you know, for all intents and purposes, I actually busted out the Leech Seed Toxic combo as part of Bart's moveset for this, specifically. Because I knew that Hippowdon being so strong, it's got all this HP that to slowly whittle it down, I didn't know how many Giga Drains it would take, and I didn't want to guess. 
probably not super useful for Hippowdon just because, you know, it is tanky, but, you know, I'm not trying to stall it out or anything. It, it, it's kind of a thing that you could, like, if I am in trouble, I could always put Bart out there with, ooh, this is gonna hurt. I could throw Bart out there, get a couple Giga Drains in, some Leech Seed Toxic, just whittled down this Hippowdon to heal the rest of my team. It's kind of the role that Bart unintentionally assumes is is doing that. It's also just kind of fun to, it, it's, I mean, I think it's kind of cheesing it a little bit. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but. Yeah, see, a Giga Drain was fine. Bart's special attack is really good, and I also have the Wise Glasses as my hold item. So Bart's special attack gets boosted even further. There's a bunch of like grass hold items like the Miracle Seed or like maybe Poison ones that you could get, but I didn't really want to pigeonhole Bart into grass or poison excellence. I would have rather have had the wise glasses to give me a little bit of both. What a tricky puzzle. I mock this, but I actually had to think about it for a second, so that's what I get for my for my big brain. Ooh, this doesn't look fun. Uh, looks like maybe we push this one all the way. There were some pretty complicated rock pushing puzzles in like the original Pokemon, if I remember. Ooh, there's a bike puzzle. Ew. But we got it right, first try. Okay. I still wish they would have put a little more thought into the... Oh, is, it, is that a double? Oh, looks like you got to fight two of them one after another. But first item, here we go. Oh, that, nope. <laughs> That's not fast enough to get over the hump here. What is this? Full restore. So the game is kind of giving you a bit of a taste of the items that you'll want to probably buy. Now what's nice, for those of you who haven't really played a game like this before, is, wait, what? This is a double battle? But you're standing next to each other, okay, whatever. Is that once you get to the Elite Four, there is a fully stocked Mart that has the highest level items. So, there you go. Ooh, Whiskash. Whiskash makes me think of, um, Ooh, this is not a good matchup. Okay, Whis Whiskash makes me think of, um, what is it, Chinchu and like uh, Lantern? It's not It's not the same thing, it, it's not the same thing at all, but it does make me think of it. So we'll see if Suzanne can hang in there for one, one move. I think Whiskash is, I wanna say ground and water? I think it's supposed to be a, a get fish? What, you've never seen a get fish before? So, yeah, that's... That's kind of an interesting combo. Ooh, this is... Oh, that's close combat. I thought that was a flying move. I got really confused for a second. I was like, man, we're about to get nuked. Did not happen. Oh, boy. This is gonna hurt. Aw, oh, Suzanne. Should have healed you first in between battles. Now I'm about to waste a revive. Oops, okay, um... Get Charlie in there, not really a good choice either, but... Charlie hasn't had a whole lot of... Hasn't had a whole lot of love. We'll use Charlie's turn to do the revive on Suzanne. And hopefully we can get Bart in there to knock out this stupid wish cash. That's really hard for me to say. Wish cash. It sounds like I'm saying it wrong. But NBD, yeah, groundwater is a great type. It's really weak to grass, unfortunately, but in general, it's really strong. Most of those water types are pretty thick, so. I feel like that became a thing. Like, I don't know if Ruby and Sapphire was known for that, but there were a ton of water types in that game, and they were all pretty, pretty tanky, which I think is interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and work together on this Staraptor. Probably won't be able to kill it in one turn, but we will try. I feel like Flamethrower might do it. It's a pretty strong fire move. I always thought of Infernape being kind of like Blaziken. 
and I don't I could be completely getting this wrong but I always thought of Infernape you know being a firefighting type as you know as back to back Pokemon games that they did let's give some uh, let's hand some Malks out let's have a glass of Malk get Suzanne up to snuff here Miguel yeah our team's doing okay Bart had more HP, but that's all right. Do we have are we the fancy bot, the fancy speedy. Oh, gosh dang it! Try that again. And a loop, and a loop. Okay, we did it. We solved the puzzle. Stone Edge. Yeah, I don't quite remember what all TMs are in this, but if there are any good ones, I may circle back around. Oh nope, I do want to use that. No, no. <sighs> Anybody want a wild Golbat? Taxi isn't really the worst opportunity to buff up your team, though. I could be showing what's available, but I really, you know, I couldn't care less about the wild Pokemon here. This is not meant to be super comprehensive, but, you know, you'll be able to catch your your kind of uh, higher level, maybe more basic Pokemon in the victory road. So if that's what you're into, here's a good chance to maybe rebuff your team before you go to the Elite Four, whatever you're into. Okay, I don't know how far along in here I am. I feel like I'm missing stuff, though. Thankfully, this Victor Road is pretty linear, which is nice. I feel like I said that word wrong. Linear. So, like I said, linear. Like someone's like a lady's name. This is my friend Lanier. She likes chocolate. Ice fishing. Chinese food. Okay. Here's our first look at a Machamp. And Machamp is huge. They're doing it. I think it's huge, isn't it? Maybe it's just like a forced perspective thing. I think they're doing a little bit of an injustice because I have a Machamp in Arceus. Maybe it's just because it's a an alpha Machamp, because I'm amazing. But it is Gigantosaurus. That's actually probably exactly what it is. So disregard what I just said. I'm not entirely sure how tall a Machamp is, but it looks kind of spoopy. It's got, uh, got them four arms. And see, it's got the belt too. So Machoke has it, it has it. I think Machop has one though. Machop is too, too young to be the world champ, unfortunately. Oh man, that is one tanky Machamp. Could have hit it with a brave bird and this would have been done, but I didn't really want to sacrifice a lot of health, health in case this Machamp has something that I should be afraid of. Apparently not. Okay. Should be able to use Nightshade here, I think. So this is when Nightshade's useful because just to kind of do some chip damage if you need to knock off a little bit more HP and you don't really want to use a, one of your good moves. Okay, everybody's at least 52 now. We're doing great. Yes, look at this. This is a definitely a great opportunity for training, especially fighting Black Belt Miles. Where's Black Belt Kilometers? Huh? Where's he at? Is that his younger brother? Okay, what is this spot? Okay. Looks like we've got some surfing puzzles to do. Do you guys love this? I love it. I doubt. Listen to my voice. It's pure, unfiltered, unadulterated love. I think these might be some dragon trainers. Not you. You're a psychic trainer, but there might be some dragon trainers in here, which will be nice. Psychic Valencia. Here's your first look at a Chingling. This is the. I don't know if you can catch these in the wild in this game, but you probably can. Um. I don't know if this was introduced in this game. It probably was, but this is the pre-evolution of Chimeco, which is one of the goofiest looking things I've ever seen. It's probably based off of some Japanese folklore, which I'm assuming a lot of these are. That would make a lot of sense. The people who designed this game are Japanese. Who'd have thunk? Yep, and then the evolution Chimeco. Yeah, I don't know. It's very weird. I don't know what it is. It kind of creeps me out. So we'll beat it up instead. Ooh, it's definitely got some good good uh, defense. My goodness. It's about to eat all six of these beat-ups, though. Yeah. 
That's a good move. So you get... I don't know. That only took five. Nice. This is awesome. Our team's doing great. Look at this. Look at him. It's. I honestly... With the way that I've been talking about this, I honestly sound like a little kid who's at the swimming pool. I'm sure we were all that kid at one point. Where, uh, you know, you're like, I don't know, five or six years old. And you are stoked to be at the at the pool. You know, you're 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 living it up. You're at the swimming hole with your family. You're having a great time. That's a dragon trainer right there. We'll come back to them in a moment. As we ride our B-roll like a surfboard. Let's see what this is. Dragon Pulse. Great. We unfortunately will not be bringing Grayson with us this time around. So no dragon pulsing. But yeah, back to pools. You're five or six years old. You're swimming around. You're just having a blast. And you want everybody to know how awesome you are at swimming. And so, you know, you, you get the attention of your family. You're like, hey, look at me. You, you jump out of the pool into like two feet of water and you feel awesome. That's kind of me in this game. So I am mentally two or three years old jumping into a little pool of water. That's exciting, right? See. Good to see what Sneasel's capable of. We'll need you'll need some ice moves, I'll give you a hint about the future. You'll definitely want to bring some bevy of ice moves. It will help you out. You are welcome for the trainer tip. And as per usual here at DMIC Industries, just the tip. Okay, was there anything else I could do? I want to get all the items and things and fight everybody that's in here. I don't know if there's anything to the right, so I need to explore. There's another pool of water that we did not attempt. This is also very annoying. I wish that it would just let me do it, instead of having to remind me. Oh, the water is blue and you can you can use surf and blah 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 blah. Like, I know. I am aware. Ooh, another pearl? That is... Pretty much just save... Save that for, uh, for selling. I think that's all that that is. We would have missed a trainer. So many trainers. Oh, he's a rider. It's time to crush his dreams. Honchcrow. Yeah, there's a lot of really good Pokemon in Victor Row, which I think is nice. But it's also kind of weird if you think about it, because there's some trainers in here that we have fought that have like one or two Pokemon. And this is supposed to be like the last stop before the Elite Four, right? supposed to be your last hurrah and there's trainers in here that have one or two Pokemon which I don't feel is really gonna cut it probably not gonna go too far you might be able to make it through one of the elite four if your Pokemon is over leveled I mean I never did that I never would play Pokemon and you know just use a level 100 Charizard my first time at the elite four I never did that so you can exclude me from that conversation all right so there's nothing over there we will go back past the Dragon Man and continue onward. There's one specific item in here that I'm really looking forward to getting. I don't know where it is, though. Not super familiar. Hopefully there aren't too many more tricky puzzles here to really challenge my small brain. Okay. Onward and upward we go. Wait, did I check all these rocks first? Always gotta check your rocks. It's good for your health. Yep. See? Sometimes next to your rocks, you have a nice big mushroom. So, there you go. The jokes tell themselves, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. That's a trainer. What's over here? So mysterious. Ooh, here we go. The Razor Claw! They didn't even hide it. Well, might as well go ahead and do it. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Oops, hold on. There we go. That jingle kind of sounds like the ding from Mega Man Legends. Anyway, oh wait, an item to be held by a Pokemon. Nope, that is, that's not it. False alarm, everybody. I got you excited for nothing, I apologize. That is not it, but we are looking for a clawed item. That is what we seek. Yeah, this episode is going to be long. I'm glad I didn't include the last one 
and this one combined, because that would have been well over an hour and a half. I'm going to try to squeeze this one under the hour mark if I can. It's just really tough when you play this game. This sounds like really complainy. It's really tough when you play this game, though, because there's so much to do. And I didn't realize how much there was to do until I played it. And like when you sit down and you play this casually, you know, you can take your time. But obviously I'm making content for viewers like you. And I don't want to waste a bunch of time. I try to be relatively concise. I mean, I guess I could edit these episodes, but that's I'm kind of doing more classic Let's Play style. If there's ever moments where I need to cut away, you all know that I do, so I'm not I'm not opposed to it. I'm not incapable of it, but in general, I like to have things be a little more raw, uncut, if you know what I'm saying. I want you guys to see the whole deal. It's probably not. Oh, does you have sturdy? I bet you do. In fairness, a lot of the time we get bailed out from like fake sturdy. None of my Pokemon actually have that as a move, but the game likes to cheese it and give it to us anyway. That was a critical hit? Oh, okay, I see. We're just too good for it. But yeah, in general, I forget what I was saying. I like to be, yeah, I like to put all out there. Maybe it's not like what the kids are looking for these days with their short attention spans and whatnot, but there are, you know, I mix it up with the series that I do. You know, this one is meant to be Kind of your long play, whereas games like Donkey Kong and Super Nintendo Sundays, those are a little bit shorter. Move Memento? What is Memento? User faints when using this move and return this harshly lower. No, that that's horrible. Why would you ever use that? No, that's a garbage move, Game Freak. What are you doing? Ooh, Napoleon. It's a steel and water type. Let's go ahead and. Use Steven. It's the final evolution of Piplup, which is one of the starters in this game. Napoleon is nice. He did a really nice job with all the starters and their final evolutions. Napoleon is great, Torterra is great, Infernape is great. They definitely did a really nice job. Not to say, like, the starters from Ruby and Sapphire were fine. You know, Septile, uh, Swampert, Blaziken. They're all, they're all pretty good. They're, like, kind of like slightly slightly worse they're like the store brand versions of, of these guys and then they completely blew it in the next generation black and white starters I will die on this hill are not good so they're not good stats wise and they're just not good with the way that they look not really a fan of any of them to be honest oop it's another dragon trainer I feel like I'm missing something there's a trainer up there how do we get to you? Gonna climb some rocks. Okay. Oop, that's not the way that this leads to. There's so many ways to go. I'm probably just gonna burn through all my repels. Not having made much progress. Ooh, there's a there's a ramp. I didn't even see it. ADA compliant, good job. Victory road. Helping out those with disabilities, we appreciate you. Who are you? Why are you? Okay. Alright. I'm assuming we're supposed to come back here later. Maybe that's like a, a legendary fight or something. Could not tell you. That was a bit of a waste just to come all the way up there for a zinc. And to be told that we'll become larger and stronger. Harder, better, faster, stronger. Okay, so we can go this way. You're right. You gotta you gotta beat the best to be the best. Something like that, right? Look at this guy's cheekbones. I don't really know if I'd associate him with being like a I mean I do okay. I guess the, the aesthetic they were going for kind of was like Lance from the original Pokemon games. How on earth are we slower than I gotta figure something out. Like do I have there's gotta be something wrong with like the priority moves on this one because Suzanne should not be slower than a Gibble. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily think of Gibble as like a slow Pokemon, but it's also probably not one I think of as a quick one either. That's really weird. 
I mean, we haven't evolved yet, so. But neither, neither are they. Gibble's not evolved. That's lame. This is a beefy Gyarados. It's not a dragon type, but it looks like one. Like I said previously. As we exchange Intimidates, we're intimidating each other. You, uh... You'll find that Gyarados, when it Mega Evolves, which they don't really put in the Pokemon games, kind of sad. The Dynamaxing and whatever was lame, in my opinion. The Mega Evolutions for Gyarados. Evolution, just one. It becomes part Dragon-type, which I think is great. Another Gibble. Can't really risk Suzanne getting punked on right now, so we'll bring out Steven. This is why I threw Ice Beam on it. And as much as I like Steven using Ice Beam, it's not quite as fun as... Buster shooting Ice Beam out of its butthole. That's a little bit more exciting for me. Just can't imagine how that works exactly. Steven kind of shoots it out of his neck. Or not Steven, Samuel. Shoots it out of his neck. I realize when I go back and listen to my recording sometimes that I say a lot of wrong things. Like, not like misinformation wrong things, but like, I just misspeak a lot. Which I think is funny. And I know that some people, when they misspeak, they'll go and like, edit themselves. You know, they'll, they'll like, edit what they said. I'm trying to change it up, but I just, I don't care. Well, I guess whatever, I said it already. Okay, I think that was the end of, that's the end of Victory Road, I assume, because it's the light at the end of the tunnel, but there was another way up. So we will go back to that. I still don't have the item I need. I, I was told that I could find it here. So, I'm going to keep exploring until we've got them all. Was that the way that I needed to go? It certainly was. Oh my goodness, I am... I'm just so bamboozled right now. There's a little bit more to explore. I feel like I didn't miss much. But there was another level up. Ooh, is this it? Is this the final item that I've been looking for? To complete the victory road? <gasps> oh my gosh, it might be everybody. It's kind of nice that they, that they did this, though. If this is what it is. If it's not, I'm going to be really mad. Okay, it's not what it is. <laughs> it's definitely not. Did I miss it? I might have. I don't know how I would have missed it. I feel like I explored everything. This is a path I didn't take. In which case, I will grab it off screen and you will see it next time. And it's a bit of a bamboozle. Yeah, I feel like I... It's definitely in the... It's definitely in Victory Road, I know that for a fact. I did my research. Unless you're not supposed to be able to get it on your first try, which would be horrific. I think this is just the end of Victory Road, right? Yeah, that's it. I totally missed it. <laughs> oh, goodness. That's okay, this episode's super long. I'll, I'll go grab it, and then, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys next time. So thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D-Mike. This has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.